the vote. In DC, we demand the vote for real progress. DC, we demand the vote for DC, we demand the vote. So tell Congress, in DC, we demand the vote. Today, we stand strong as a city. In the past four years, the bright rays of prosperity have shown us how far the city can come. As we look forward over the next four years, our achievements, though impressive, are nowhere near complete. The clouds of a national recession overshadow the district and threaten our march towards progress. We're in the midst of a local and national job crisis. As we move forward, tough choices will have to be made. It is time for fiscal responsibility and accountability. A time to address our job training crisis. A time to shift our education reform from school modernization to classroom revitalization and parent involvement and responsibility. <laughs> Last month, the council declared a job training emergency for good reason. Unemployment is predicted to reach somewhere near over 9%. As you know, I was inspired in 2004 when then Senator Obama was quoted in a magazine article he noted his focus on job training programs that would ensure that everyone had a chance to participate in the economic reward of the state of Illinois. When I was elected four years ago, I promised to restore vocational education, and we have. We've created infrastructure for our youth. It is now time to provide a job training infrastructure for our adults. See, we do not have a job problem. We have a job crisis, a tribe training crisis. This government, by public policy, has not focused on creating a job training infrastructure. So it's this government that has the responsibility, by public policy, to bring back creating job training infrastructure programs. And it needs to be just as intentional about bringing them back as it was about eliminating them years ago. As President-elect Obama promised to add more resources to local municipalities, creating more opportunities for city infrastructure projects, our city must be prepared to make sure that our residents have to take advantage of the new jobs that will be created with these new resources. We, along with the private sector, have spent millions and millions of dollars on creating great facilities such as the Hospitality Charter High School, such as Phelps Architect Engineering and Construction High School, such as the Cardoza Construction Academy. I think it's our responsibility making it a priority to keep these facilities open on nights and weekends so our adult population can get a hand up in job training that are available now. And if you don't believe me, just walk down any part of the city. Count the people that are working on these projects. I think you'd be hard pressed to find many District of Columbia residents working. So education reform requires more steps. Today, the meeting of family is moving in a very different direction than when I was a youth. I define family not just, just a mom and a dad, but a community. Camille Yarborough once said, our children are in trouble because our adults are in trouble. In our city, there are too many grandparents raising their grandkids. While I understand the circumstances that have created this environment, we should not allow another generation to grow up believing that this is the norm. We must first change the philosophy that there is a simply a relationship of a student and a teacher. The third element, in my opinion, and the most important element, is a parent. We must find a way to engage parents to be part of the solution. All too often, we point to the parents as being part of the problem. But I would be hard pressed to find many instances where we are trying to help parents help themselves and thereby, therefore, help their children. We must keep in mind always that you're a parent first. In order to focus on change in our schools, we must demand more for our parents. Many of our children are doing the right thing every day. They deserve our full support so they can stay the course. Their stories go unreported and sometimes we lose sight of the fact that our students are assets not liabilities. Many of our students have lost hope in the promises of the city. One once said, you can't push anyone up the ladder unless he or she is willing to climb. I believe it's the responsibility of the government to provide the ladder. True education reform cannot and will not take place by firing teachers and principals alone.
we have some of the best teachers and principals in the country. Accountability. <laughs> Accountability must be our number one priority. I'm reminded of a story by Mr. Frank Watkins who said, if you have two people running in a mile race around the track, and one has a ball and chain tied around his leg for three laps, you cannot take the ball and chain off for the final lap and expect them to win. For too long, so many good teachers have stayed in deplorable schools with no human services, no parent involvement, and to be honest, no real focus on change from the executive or the legislative branch of government. Now, it's our responsibility to weed out the bad teachers while ensuring that those veteran nationally recognized teachers are rewarded for their tireless efforts. With the fiscal uncertainty of these current times, we must be more effective and efficient by properly allocating each and every tax dollar and making sure that each dollar goes to worthwhile and benefits the majority of district residents. Hold those accountable that receive government assistance to deliver top quality service. So in closing, I see a tremendous opportunity within our grasp. I know we could be great if only we dare. I love this city more than anything else, except my wife and kids. I think uh, as we come up to Martin Luther King's birthday, I think he said it, said it well. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in the moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in the times of challenge and controversy. Today we stand in challenging times, but working together we can make this a great city. Another great mayor said, most of our problems can be solved. Most of them will take brains. Some of them will take patience. But all of them will take us wrestling them like an alligator in the swamp. We must renew our sense of urgency to create real change for our residents, the change that residents can believe in. It's our time to create believable change. So yes, I stand before you this day pledge to continue to serve all the people of the District of Columbia. I look forward to working with the mayor, the chairman, and all of my colleagues, newly won, Michael Brown. <laughs> for I always will be a man of the people, for the people. I love you, God bless you, God bless the District of Columbia. Progress.